So lots of people have been getting into game consoles lately. During these tough times that video games have become a very big form of media that everyone can take a look into. Luckily we have many games to choose from, but that can also be a bit overwhelming for some. Now the game we're all here for today is Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. And you can catch this game on sale every once in a while. Now the big question is, is it worth it to get it, the game itself in 2020? My name is Paperbot and I'm going to be talking about Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate and the pros and cons of the game itself. Now before the review I want to explain something before we get started. And that's more so because I actually have 400, over 400 hours into the game and I also mean a few weapons, but I'm not the best with all of them. This is coming from my viewpoint from someone that loves to play the series and also loves to see new people start to get into the game. So I'd like to pretend that I know what I'm doing. Once again, these are my opinions and also topics I've gone over with friends that play the game with me and actually have a little bit more experience. If you have anything different, comment down below. And don't forget to follow me on my social medias, right now I have my Twitter, the link for my Twitter will be in my description. Pros The Monster Roster Now, the Monster Roster in this game is massive, and I mean massive. The full monster list in this game is a total of 129 monsters. Which means, if we do some math, loads of different weapon types to choose from, and also loads of different armor sets that you can use. And that's just the surface when it comes to your own customization. The reason I keep going back to Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate is that reason alone. I even started to hunt for different weapons in the game so that I can learn the different weapon types themselves. Now, the biggest thing I could ever say about this part, variety. The design and quirkiness. The game itself has been very fun and very colorful compared to the load of other games on the system. It never really took itself seriously until recent installments. Jumping into the designs of the weapons and armors is one of the strongest parts of this game and luckily if you really, really love a specific design of an armor set, you can transmog it. Basically, turn into a skin and place it onto a better piece of armor. And if you don't like how the better piece of armor looks, you can have that skin itself. So it's really nice to have, it's a really great option, and I wish to see it in the future in future games themselves. They have kind of started to do that, but not as cool as they did in this one. Hunting Styles and Arts Do you love anime? Well, Monster Hunter's got you. Okay, in all seriousness though, Hunting Styles and Arts have really changed the game in a lot of different ways. The biggest change is showing that you can actually choose what style you can go into a fight with. Do you want to start flying up in the air, slashing your way up? Try aerial style. Do you want to have to be able to do quick, precise dodges and do a counter attack? Go at it. It's a very big thing in the game and I really love this because it actually kind of opens up more customizations, more ways to fight monsters, and you have a lot of different things you can do. Prowlers and Palicos Cats Dimpas The support play from your army of cats is the best, which are your Palicos. Playing as the Prowler is also one of the best feelings ever. Prowler is like being an alpha cat to your cat army. I believe choosing your type of cat is awesome and is more like a class system that a lot of people are more familiar with. Luckily the class systems usually go by defense, attack, healing, trappers, bombers, beasts, gathering, defense, and charisma classes. And that's for each cat. These guys are adorable and are very beginner friendly because they are very simple to use but also very hard to master. There's a very big system when it comes to your own palicos and prowlers that I recommend watching videos to kind of go over but once you get into them and you know what to use with them, they can go all the way to late game. Heck, I've seen some of my friends even use only prowlers to get to late game. Don't sleep on them. Cons. Now we're going into the cons. Of course, if you disagree with any of these, feel free to comment below your reason and I'll go ahead and listen to them. 
lots and lots of menu dialogue. Now, I personally like to read, and sometimes I love to continuously smash my A button, but you have to get used to reading in this game. And that's just how it is. The game is kind of older than any of the newer games that have recently come out. And honestly, I'd rather smash my A button than listen to very bad voice acting in the recent games. <laughs> World. <clears throat> But there's loads of dialogue that you're going to have to read. The menu system is a bit archaic, but once you get yourself wrapped around the menu system, it's still pretty much the same as newer as the newer games, and using it will be easy. They still have their charm, and is very functional, but I hope in future games we get a lot of the quality of life changes that came in future titles. Loading Zones Now, the flow of the game is different in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. I always thought the loading page was sometimes a breath of fresh air or just a frustration when the monster is standing too close to it. Now the newest games have gotten rid of this and gone open world, but I feel bad if I didn't have to talk about this. With loading zones you have to expect to kind of work your way around them, but it doesn't take away from any of the experience when you're fighting a monster and sometimes you're very lucky when you get knocked out of the room to actually heal up before you actually get comboed to death. Gathering and farming. Not going to lie, and I say this to everyone, Monster Hunter is not a game for every gamer. Since it is a looting game, everything's available to you if you have the time to farm for it. Fighting bigger monsters again to be able to get new parts. Also, gathering quests have been updated a little to have a cat send stuff back early. Of course, this does slow down the pace of the game after hunting some big bad monsters, but it's best to treat this as a breath of fresh air. Final Verdict In the end, pros and cons can make and break your decision. Personally, I love the Monster Hunter games and have been playing for a very long time. Honestly, the improvements they have made over time have been great and every game that has been released has always improved. Starting on the PSP, going all the way to the Nintendo Switch, once they release a new Monster Hunter game, I am personally going to go ahead and buy it. Of course, the biggest thing I love about this game is that it has produced friendships for me, allowed me to go online and actually meet new people and have hours and hours of fun. All I can say is, it's Monster Hunter after all.